Welcome to part two of this three-part series on convincing your wife to let you buy a Tesla. Now it's time to do our homework and really dig in and figure out what the key pieces are that are gonna help kind of push her over the edge and convince her that this is a good idea. Not with any kind of made up stuff, but real facts and figures, which means we're gonna have to do some homework here. Now that may seem daunting at first, but don't worry, you've got me and I'm gonna guide you through every step of the way here. Let's dive in. Humans are driven by stories. It's ingrained in us. It's as old as we are. Even back in cave paintings from the very first Homo sapiens, you saw the elements of a story. Remember that line from Back to the Future when Doc is trying to explain to Marty that in the future, cars are gonna fly? What's that line? How does it go? Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. While I have your attention on this, do you remember the formula for calculating linear regression of two independent variables? No? Well, it's likely because it's rather pedantic at this point. You don't really need to know that information off the top of your head. It doesn't serve you any purpose, especially when in a tool like Excel, you can type in a formula and calculate it or something like Tableau. It's just a couple clicks away. These things are trivial in today's terms. Whereas, you know, back in the days of when I was in school, it was very difficult to kind of come up with these answers. More importantly, you didn't learn that in the context of a story that you loved. So the likelihood that your brain would actually put that information somewhere that you can easily recall is much lower. This is why telling a story when you're trying to convince your wife to let you buy a Tesla is so critical. She needs to have the facts, have the real information, but put in the context of a story that is going to just easily be absorbed. Think of it as the interface to our brains. When you just spout out random facts and information at someone, unless it's, it's constructed in a narrative that's familiar to us, the chance of us absorbing it is just really low. So there's two parts to this. One, we need to do our homework, and two, we need to develop a story. So first, we need to pick the main theme for our story, and this is the, the topic we're gonna research the most. The three areas that I really like to bring up here when trying to explain to people the value of Tesla and why it makes sense for them to get one are cost, safety, and the environment. First, let's talk about cost. I think this is a major reason to buy a Tesla. It's the one that I basically used to convince my wife, Jenny, that we should buy one. So there are kind of main categories and broad strokes here that we can cover. And then I'm going to show you how you can actually dive in and get these kind of more detailed granular numbers for your argument to your wife here. So yes, Tesla's of course, like a lot of electric cars have a higher upfront cost. But if you compare the true cost of ownership of a car like this to something like a Honda Accord, the touring sedan, which is kind of the most similar to the Model S, the true cost of ownership there is actually over $51,000, according to Edmunds.com. So with a Tesla, after you pay that original price, the cost for fuel and maintenance are just gonna be dramatically lower. How much lower? Well, if you head over to teslanomics.co, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can calculate the savings for fuel on a Tesla that you would purchase here. So what we need to do to use this calculator is first enter the miles per gallon that the current vehicle or the comparison vehicle we get is, then enter the average price of gas. You can look this up at AAA or just drive down the street and figure out what it is, whatever you're used to paying. Don't guess on that, get a real number. So either literally go find a gas station or look at the AAA website. I'll put a link to that in the description. There are also Gas Buddy and other websites. Punch those two numbers in and now we have kind of the basis for what our gas per mile would cost. Then we add in how many miles we're going to actually drive per month. This way, it's gonna be a real number, not some kind of estimated figure that you might get from you know a website like Tesla's. Then we need to do the same on the electricity side. So we need to punch in our electricity rate. So there are national averages here and I'll put a link to a couple of websites where you can go find that. However, if you pull up your electricity bill, you ought to be able to figure that out pretty easily on some of the details pages. But also with your electricity company, depending on where you live, you may get a special time of use rating, a discount at certain times a day to charge your Tesla. This is where the plot thickens. 
For example, here in San Diego where I live, the power company SDG&E has a special time of use rating system where the price per kilowatt hour changes depending on the time of day. They have their own separate rates for electric vehicle owners because what they want to do is they want to give you an extra low rate in what they call the super off peak time, that midnight to 6 a.m. And in your car, when you plug in at your house, what you'll do is you specify what they call scheduled charging. So that way the car doesn't start to charge until the time you tell it. That way you can be guaranteed that when you're charging your car, you are doing it at the cheapest and lowest rate possible. In San Diego right now, the EV time of use plan that I'm on gives me nine cents per kilowatt hour. So if you punch in that number to the calculator here of nine cents per kilowatt hour, and you choose the correct model, in my case, the Model S, uh, along with all the other variables we put in, you'll see that my total electricity cost for the month, on average, these may change, give or take, is around $44.50 compared to a total gas cost of $153.60. That is a savings of over 70% each month. The next thing to do is to get an insurance quote because this is where sometimes the variables really get crazy. So depending on your current situation, if you have someone like I have farmers and we have three cars plus homeowners plus life insurance, we get all kinds of discounts stacked on top of each other. So it actually gets to be a pretty affordable price for our cars. So Tesla started offering their own insurance recently. I found that that was a bit more expensive than what I'm paying. But if you just want to benchmark there's an easy way to go. You also could just email your current insurance provider, ask them what it would be. It might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less. Just have all the facts ready when you present this to your wife, because this is another variable to consider for sure. But my guess is, and from my own experience, that it's not going to be too much off from what you pay now. All right, let's talk safety. Tesla has an amazing record when it comes to safety in their vehicles. They have the lowest probability of injury rated by the NHTSA ever. Safety is at Tesla's core. In addition, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, or the IIHS, recently gave the Tesla Model 3 its top safety pick plus. This is one of the top awards that they give out and it was because the Model 3 specifically is so good at avoiding injury to the people driving it. So this is another kind of accolade for them. So not only is the NHTSA kind of lauding them for how safe their cars are, but so is the IIHS. There are also lots of examples online of people getting in accidents and surviving without a scratch or you know, seemingly a couple bumps and bruises in rollover accidents and really, really intense, severe accidents. So you can find examples of these, but bottom line, there isn't a car out on the road today that is safer than any of the Tesla models. This also doesn't even get into the safety benefits of autopilot. Tesla is in a unique position when it comes to the safety stuff because of autopilot being available in hundreds of thousands of their cars. The latest data that I've seen shows that people driving with autopilot on are likely to get into a crash-like event, we'll call it an accident, every 2.87 million miles. This is compared to the NHTSA average of 436,000 miles. So a huge disparity there, but there's more to that story. You can't really compare apples to apples there because the autopilot miles are typically, mostly, should be only on freeways, whereas the NHTSA numbers is all driving conditions. So there is a bit of a regression to the mean, and we've seen that number from Tesla drop slightly over time. But you can see that in any way you look at this, the signs are all positive that autopilot makes us safer. This is why if you're looking for a car and safety is a key component of your pitch as to why you want this car, maybe you have kids and you want it to be safe for them, autopilot is definitely a bonus, even if you get the very first version of autopilot, which coincidentally is my favorite still to this day. Next, let's talk about the environment. And this is somewhat of a bit of a controversy out there, but really it's more of some kind of disinformation campaigns that some of the big oil companies have, have made out there and successfully kind of put into people's psyche that somehow electric vehicles aren't as clean as gas cars because those darn batteries have to be created somehow. Yes, they do, but mostly the main materials from them are not much different and not much more uh, polluting to the environment than any of the other stuff that you have to make a regular car. So really, it's kind of a dumb argument, but 
people have this sense of, well, your electricity has to come from somewhere, and that electricity is coal, and that's going to be terrible for the environment. Well, there is some truth to that, but in reality, it doesn't, doesn't really shake out. And thankfully, there are lots of people out there that have created some really useful tools for us to understand these numbers. Notably, the Union of Concerned Scientists have a tool here to show exactly how clean your electric vehicle is. Because depending on the energy mix of where the electricity comes from, your car will essentially have a different level of emissions than a different car with a different energy mix. So where I live in San Diego, California, if I were to calculate the emissions from that 2015 Tesla Model S 85D, it's showing that I would be getting essentially the same as a gas car that gets 108 miles per gallon. Yeah, more, far more than any car probably ever will get. So the, tr the savings in terms of CO2, which is the greenhouse gas that is causing a lot of warming and things like that, it's great. It is tremendously better for the environment to, to keep this car. Now, that's not to mention that these cars are rated to last. The powertrain and drive unit and everything else are about 1 million miles, and data for the battery shows that it should last well over 500,000 miles. And then even afterwards, those materials get recycled. I mean, it's just one of those things where, you know, even if the initial the creation of the car does create more emissions than a, a gas car because the the tailpipe emissions the you know after the creation of the car emissions that that are generated to to drive it are so dramatically lower you end up saving somewhere between 45 and 80% depending on where that energy comes from the Department of Energy in the U.S. also has a tool to show this. And looking at California where I am, you can see that the actual energy or the CO2 emissions from an electric vehicle, an all electric vehicle, are about six times less than that of a gasoline car. So regardless of the situation here of how, you know, how much more energy was used to create the car, the car over its lifetime will have a dramatically reduced amount of emissions to the environment than a gas car equivalent. So use those tools, write those numbers down, and this make this part of your argument. And just the last point on the environment stuff, just because it is so key here. I mean, this is literally Tesla's mission. The reason Tesla exists is to help accelerate our transition to sustainable energy. Now that you have your homework done and you have all the details, whether it be the safety numbers or the cost or the environmental impact of owning a Tesla, and you know which is the overarching theme for your wife when trying to deliver this message to her, you need to craft your story. And there's no simpler format than the three-act structure. The three-act structure has, as the name implies, three parts. The setup, the conflict, and then the resolution. You need to pick the theme, the main point for your story to your wife as to why you should buy a Tesla, and start with that, whether it be safety, environment, or cost. Let's say it's cost. Well, I might start with saying something along the lines of, I think I have an, a way for us to save about 50% on gas each month. Something that doesn't give away the, the story or the punchline of it, but teases that there is something worth paying attention to. If it were climate or environment related stuff, I would say something like, did you know that EVs are great for the environment and will actually save about 45 to 80% of the overall emissions compared to a, a gas car? So again, you're setting up an interesting fact, something that maybe she wants to know more about. And if it were something about safety, I might say, you know, I've thought about when we have kids someday, we're probably gonna need a safe car. So write down this sentence. This is your main theme. What is the main point that you're trying to get across here? So next we need the beginning and the ending of our journey. So where is she at mentally when you're gonna bring this to her? Did she just get home from work and is stressed and doesn't wanna talk, just wants to have a glass of wine and watch Jane the Virgin and, sorry, I'm getting a little too detailed, I know. But point being, where is she when you bring this to her? Is it, hey, I wanna take you to a fun place for lunch that you've been wanting to go and talk about something? Or is it just randomly, you know, on the weekend, strolling, hanging out, whatever? Think about where she's going to be at mentally when you start and write that down. So maybe that's on a next post-it note there. Then you need an ending. Where is she going to be at the end of your pitch, of your story? Well, in this case, it should be obvious. You're going to be, she's going to be saying yes to buy a Tesla. 
pretty straightforward. So let's just try this one time through with the cost version and the setup portion. So we have, remember, our three parts. We have our audience journey, where they're starting, where they're ending, you know, buying a Tesla from, you know, wherever they're at mentally. And the main point, the main message, cost, environment, or safety. The setup is going to be that teaser that, you know, I think I found a way for us to save about 50% a month on our gas for our cars. There, she's intrigued. She's interested. Huh? What do you mean? She's going to want to know more. Then you start bringing in all the facts about electricity, the cost. There are these special time of use rates for our house, and we could charge an electric car at night. If it's a Tesla, you get free supercharging for a certain amount, which is also reduces the cost. And it turns out it's just like really, really cheap to own and operate an electric car. There's almost no maintenance costs because brakes with regenerative braking, there's no oil or transmissions to worry about or any of that stuff. Also bring in the cost of insurance and say, well, you know, insurance is a little bit more, but in the end, if we had an electric car, this actually would save us, you know, about $5,000 a year or whatever the number actually is for you. Because remember, you've done your homework on it at this point. Now you've kind of set her up for the conflict. My guess is that you've maybe already mentioned buying a Tesla to her or that you like Teslas or she probably has an inkling here about this. And so if it were my wife, that's immediately where her head would go is that, oh, you're trying to sell me something. You're trying to convince me of that. This is where the conflict stage comes into our story. So during the conflict, she's going to probably throw a bunch of questions at you and kind of trying to discredit what you say and this and that. And this is where all that homework really comes into play because these are objective facts. You're not giving your opinion of like, oh God, look at how good it is. I would feel so cool in it. All my friends would be jealous. We know that that's what you're really thinking, but there are objective facts to present and those are kind of indisputable. So make sure you just have those 100% ingrained. You don't even have to look them up by the time you're having this conversation. After you get through that part and you've kind of laid out all the details for her, you can kind of bring it home with the other two elements. You know, if it was cost, like in my example, then I'd bring back, you know, when we have kids, we're going to need a safe car. And in fact, the Tesla Model S, the one I'm looking at, is rated the second safest car ever tested by the NHTSA. It's crazy. Check out these videos. And then you can, you know, show some videos of them playing, whatever, of them crashing and all the tests they've done. And so now you're adding on, right? All the original conflict, all the, the no that you got, you've kind of dismissed with objective facts. Now you're going on to, you know, bringing it home and kind of tipping the scale of, look, it's not just that thing. It's not just cost, it's safety. Oh, and by the way, you know, the environment is a big deal here. I always kind of thought that maybe electric cars, you know, really bad originally, and depending on where the electricity came from, because it has to come from somewhere. Well, it turns out, it's like having a gas car with 108 miles per gallon. That's crazy, right? So you kind of present all this stuff. Be patient. Do not be pushy whatsoever. You're not trying to sell her on anything. I mean, you kind of are, but you're trying to show her all of the facts and information that you have actually done research and done your homework on and let her come to the decision herself. Because if you do it in the right way and you present them in the right order and you're patient and you know you don't just kind of hammer it all through, then she likely is gonna to come to the same conclusion that you did that you are ready to buy a Tesla. So if all that goes well, you'll be driving a Tesla in no time. So be patient, deliver the facts, be objective. She may have some very legitimate cases or reasons why that you shouldn't buy one. And, and it's not to say that there are none, but overall, in its entirety, I usually have a hard time seeing any other way that it's not a good idea to buy a Tesla. Lastly, in this series, what I want to go do is sit down with my wife, Jenny, talk about how I approached her initially, talk about how she felt during that time, and then about this approach I just recommended here and maybe any additional tips she can give you from a woman's perspective. And maybe lastly, just finish that off with her overall thoughts of owning a Tesla or several Teslas at this point over the past few years and how she just feels about it. And if all else fails, you can share that with your wife to just kind of get her perspective. It's not just some, some numbers you you got from this guy on YouTube. It's like a legit woman's 
perspective on it, which is always valid and very valuable in, in a conversation like this. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed with the bell notifications turned on because, you know, YouTube likes to bury things and hide things and they change the algorithm. So make sure you do that. Um, otherwise, you might miss it. So, you know, lastly, don't forget when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here next time. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope this is really just helping you get closer and closer to buying your first Tesla because it's kind of life-changing and something that I want you to experience like my family did. So make sure that you don't miss anything. You can get extra content and chat with me and other folks in the community daily by joining us at patreon.com slash teslanomics.